me share my screen. <clears throat> Uh, can everybody see my screen? Yes. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. Let's see. Um, All right, how's everybody doing? I believe the uh, the first assignment is due tonight at midnight. That's for the installing the database. By, by now, everybody should have a, a running database that you can connect to through a um, through a workbench MySQL client. Hopefully, has everybody had a chance to create a, a simple table, a, a couple of inserts. Uh, some some um, some select some selecting some of the uh, records from there either by primary key or by username. Hopefully, everybody is uh, able to do that successfully. Anybody have uh, any questions before we get started? Let's see, give a couple more minutes, folks. Come in. Let's see. Uh, Jack Ferrari, welcome. Mariah, Ali, Asher, Kriti, Melody, welcome. Welcome, Jason, Matt, Gaiwan, Giwan. Is that, is that how you pronounce it? Hello, Gio, Ong, Lex. Hi, Lauren, Julian, Nicholas. Hi, Emily, Caleb, hi, Lex, Gabby, Murphy. All right, one more minute. <clears throat> How are you doing today, Professor? I'm doing great, thank you. How are you doing? Pretty well. It's great to hear. I hope everybody's uh, safe and sound with your significant others. Have you gotten your vaccine yet, Professor? No, not yet. I'm stuck at home. I haven't gone out in a while. Oh, nice. Yeah, I just asked because one of my other professors got it yesterday or something. Oh, yeah. I see. How's their feeling? feeling? Any side effects? No, not so far. Good. Exactly. Well, I've heard that the second, uh, the, the, the second one is uh, stronger and and you that uh, we should be ready for uh, like a whole week of hurt. We'll see. Oh, wow. All right, uh, it's one thirty-five. Let's get let's get started. All right, welcome everybody. Uh, another week of uh, thirty-two hundred database design. Let's uh, take a look at um, our syllabus and our calendar to see where we are. Uh, so we we uh, just completed uh, the first week last week. A couple of uh, lessons. We introduced the first assignment. We uh, looked over the syllabus and the calendar for the semester. Um, and let's uh, review what we've got here in Canvas. Uh, again, if you remember, um, on the left-hand side, we got uh, links to a couple of things. The quizzes are going to be listed here. And we're going to have the first quiz next week. Uh, more on that later. Uh, we, the assignments are available through the assignments tag link here. We have uh, the uh, Piazza. Uh, for if you have if you're asking any questions, please stick to uh, Piazza as the main way of communicating. Uh, if you have uh, any questions, please use that instead of you know, sending me email. Although feel free to text me as well. Uh, Zoom meetings, so you can uh, join these uh, these meetings. And uh, if if you prefer to to uh, 
you know, either one, I have, a, I have links here in the resources. So you have uh, links to both lectures, the one at 135, which is the one, this one that we're, we're here, or if you prefer a little later at 325, then you can catch it a little later as well. And, uh, and we're trying to maintain the two lectures in sync. So, so the 325 will be a repeat of, uh, of, today, of today's lecture. Uh, the main content is in modules uh, or home. Either one will take you to the to the main content. And uh, the the first module there is uh, resources. You know some very general uh, resources uh, such as links to the syllabus, Piazza, the two lectures, and also I'm um, I'm recording all these videos in my YouTube channel and I'm adding them to a playlist which are is available uh, right here if you want to take a look at. Uh, you know, previous uh, lectures or the one you just missed, uh, then you certainly can look at that. Or, or you can um, re uh, sign up for my uh, YouTube channel and you'll get notifications when new uh, videos are uh, available. Also, the office hours for the TAs. Again, please make, make use of uh, this uh, great team that's uh, made itself available throughout the, the week and multiple, multiple days, multiple times. Uh, hopefully, we're covering uh, you know, a large swath of various time zones, and you, you should find somebody who can uh, who can ans answer your questions. Let's see a question in the chat. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Yes, <laughs> and the bell, definitely. And like my videos and leave a comment. <laughs> um, let's see the. Um, so yeah, so the first first week that we discussed uh, uh, last week, we just passed. We did discover dis discuss the first assignment which is due today uh, at midnight. Um, now, I know there might be some folks that might be struggling still installing uh, their SQL Server. That's fine. You know, we'll work with you to resolve any of those technical issues. Uh, so we'll be very lenient with the, at least the first uh, assignments, the due date. Right? If, you know, if, you, if you are still struggling, uh, definitely, you know, uh, if it's something technical, uh, definitely we'll work with you and, and we'll waive the, uh, the, 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 the late penalties. For that okay uh, also you know you know we work we walked you through downloading the the database server installing it and working with it for ins inserting and in, in, uh, retrieving some data and we have just started talking about class diagrams and the designing of the database right and we'll continue all this week talking about database design we'll also present uh, this uh, today with the second assignment which will be due next tuesday uh, so the, all these assignments are there's, there's quite a few assignments, but I think they're short enough that yeah, you should be successful in, uh, in, in completing them in, in the week, okay? And they, you know, they tackled various uh, topics in the database design process. Uh, one thing about the quizzes, um, I, th I think I've uh, looked at uh, quite a few folks and there's uh, enough uh, variety of uh, time zones. Uh, some folks uh, are you know, in many different places and um, so I think I've, I've made the decision to, instead of requiring you to be here at a particular time, I'm just gonna make these quizzes available for, uh, for 48 hours. They will be available the day of the, of the quiz uh, and it'll be available for um, 48 hours uh, later. And so you do not, we're not gonna do the quizzes during class time. I mean, instead, they'll be available, you can, um, Take it anytime you want. They will be timed. So most of them are going to be about 30 minutes long. And most of them are just going to be like five, you know, six questions. Uh, so I think you should have plenty of time uh, per question. Uh, it is open book. So, you know, so make sure that, um, you know, you, you, you familiarize yourself with the, the assignment that we worked on for that particular, for the previous week that we, that you familiarize yourself with all the slides where you can find everything. And you know, and definitely feel free to ask questions about uh, assignments or slides and in preparation for those quizzes. Obviously, the quiz you're you're uh, you're you're meant to take those quizzes on your own to measure your particular skills. Uh, let's see, any questions on the chat? Uh, bless. Um, all right, so so that that should take care of the uh, issue of folks being in different time zones. Uh, that um, you know, if you're consuming this content. And at a later time, right? And uh, definitely, you can't make these uh, these particular uh, th this particular lecture. Uh, you can definitely take the quiz right after the, the lecture, right? Or later later on that night, or in the morning, the next morning, right? But make sure that you take the quiz within those forty eight hours. Okay. 
Um, all right, excellent. So let's uh, move on to this week's material. So we had already started with the um, with the UML class diagrams. We'll continue talking about class diagrams, um, and um, uh, and then and then move on to some more in depth uh, data design topics. Right. So let's finish up the uh, UML class diagram, and then we'll have covered enough enough material enough, enough theory that we can then tackle the second the second assignment but i definitely want to get started get started in the second assignment so let's finish up the uml class diagram lecture uh, so here's the the, the the slides that we had uh, started uh, late last week uh, let's see we had um, uh, discussed uh, you know, uml as being the unified modeling language uh, providing all sorts of diagrams uh, for establishing a language, a graphical language, so that multiple folks can can talk about data and how it's structured, um, and, uh, and and so so that uh, you know database designers can talk to software engineers, to business analysts, right? Even though not everybody might use the same technology stack or might not even use the same programming language, we can all talk about how the the data is structured, right? And um, it's it's only a, UML. It's only a documentation language. It's a it's a language that allows you to you know jot down graphically and talk about how the data is structured and how it's implemented. But 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 leaves the implementation out, right? And, you know, then you're you're responsible for then converting these UML diagrams into uh, more specific versions that uh, are specific for the implementation details and whether you're using Java, C sharp. Whether you're using Python or using SQL to implement this, or JSON or XML, right? The different implementations of the data structures, right, have different idiosyncrasies depending on what technology you're using. Uh, but UML is meant for thinking about it in a very, very high level, right? And then, you know, progressively, incrementally deciding how is it that you're going to implement those diagrams into something more concrete. Uh, but yeah, it all it all starts with uh, UML class diagrams. Uh, we we talked about um, uh, you know, designing uh, for, for the database, we introduce the class diagrams as, as being, being these boxes that has three sections, right? The name of the name of the class, the attributes or properties, sometimes they're called attributes, sometimes they're called properties, uh, and also uh, methods down below, which we're going to ignore in this class, right? We're not going to be talking about implementing methods. That's when you're programming, right? And using a programming language to implement those right now. In this class, we're mostly going to be focusing on this part at the top, you know, attributes, properties, their data types, and things like that. Um, we talked about the, the the different attributes that you could you can add to a a class. Uh, we talked about multiplicity and how many of you know how many of instances of a particular class are participating in a relationship. You know, how many people are you talking about? Right? Is this one person? Is it multiple people? Um, and we also talked about um, stereotypes, right? That allow it to extend a little bit the uh, uh, the language, the the UML language. If um, right, if uh, if the language doesn't provide a specific concept, uh, then then you can create your own stereotypes. Here's one very common stereotype called the enumeration, that it's saying that you should not interpret this as a as a regular class diagram. In, in a class diagram, this would be the name of the class. And these would be uh, the properties or attributes of that class. Uh, in here, instead, we're saying that, hey, do not interpret this as a class. Instead, this is enumeration. And these are the valid values of a new data type that you're creating. You're creating a brand new data type called movie genre. And the valid values for the genre are horror, comedy, sci-fi, and fantasy. Uh, a common um, use, a common um, enumeration that we use uh, uh, very, very often is, for instance, the integers. The integers, we never think about them as enumerations, but they're actually enumerations. It's a very large enumeration, right? It enumerates all the valid integers, right? It goes all the way from minus infinity, right? Passes all the way through zero, and then it grows, goes all the way to positive infinity. So all those are the possible valid values of the integer data type, okay? And so they would be all enumerated here, right? All the whole numbers, all the integers would be enumerated here. Um, we also talked about uh, specialization and generalization as a mechanism for uh, um, talking about, um, you know, capturing general ideas, right, in a in a uh, superclass, right, and uh, and then uh, capturing more special cases of that of that same idea 
capturing in in uh, derived classes or subclasses, right? And there's many many uh, jargon around this uh, this idea, right? We 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 either call the this this um, we call it the uh, either the base class, and these are the derived or derived classes. We call we call this and you know base class, or we call this subclasses. Uh, we call this you know the parent class, and we call this the children, right? Of of that one. Uh, we call this a general um, version of a, of a concept, and then these are special cases of that concept, right? Um, the, 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 the common example that uh, is often used is, uh, is for instance, uh, if you define, uh, for instance, a class uh, where, where you define maybe a, uh, a shape, right? And then a shape might be too generic, right? It, and, and then you, you might need to be able to get a little more specific about what shape are you talking about, right? Uh, and so for instance, you, you might have a, a rectangle, right? And you might have a, um, actually, let me, let me uh, grab this copy, paste, and then you might have here a rectangle, uh, or you might have a, a circle here, right? And and the idea is that this allows you to implement things that are common to everybody. So all shapes, for instance, uh, might have a width, it might have a height, right? It might have a color, it might have a name, and all shapes have that, right? So instead of instead of each one, instead of declaring these things, instead of declaring these things in each one of uh, a rectangle and circle, right, where they might have width, height, color, and the rectangle and the circle might have in addition. I have radius, right? Uh, you you grab the things that are common to everybody, to all circles, all all rectangles. For instance, like the color and the name uh, is a share are shared attributes of both circle and rectangle, and you would put it in the top level shape, right? Uh, so, for instance, um, uh, you might um, remove things, right, and only keep the things that are special about a circle, and then. And then you can then you can de de define a a uh, relationship of uh, generalization and specialization, uh, where you might say that I am going to inherit circle is just a special case of a shape, and it inherits right all the attributes from a a top level or parent shape right, and same thing for rectangle it's going to inherit, oops it's going to inherit. Um, uh, it, it's in going to inherit attributes from its parent shape. There we go. Okay, so we say that shape is a base class and rectangles and circles are subclasses. Or we say that shape is a superclass and rectangles and circles are subclasses or derived classes, right? Or this is a parent class and these are children, right? That inherit from their, their, from their parents. Uh, so it's you know it's a very important uh, aspect of object orientation in general, uh, but uh, definitely something that is used you know very very often on how is it that we're going to split the data and how we're going to store it and retrieve it. Uh, we also talked about multi-valued attributes, attributes that uh, might have multiple values. So these like you know this might be like an array of strings, and you can specify how many how many uh, tags we have. Maybe you have many many tags. Um, and we have association. This is a very very general. Uh, description of some some um, some uh, a, a relationship between two classes, right? Authors and books are associated, or they're 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 related somehow, and we specify that with a simple uh, line between between two classes, right? So the line can be a simple a simple line, uh, or it might have arrows, it might have the triangles that we saw earlier, uh, it might have diamonds. Uh, it might have you know different 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 um, uh, symbols right at the end of each one of the lines. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but the simplest of which is just a simple line, right? And this establishes that one author is at least associated with one book. We don't know how many just yet because we haven't said uh, any multiplicity, but certainly we can add multiplicity and say how many authors are uh, participating with how many books. Uh, it's also very common to annotate or or give names to the of this association on uh, a, a on either end of the class. So on either end of this line, you can say, well, 
what is the role of this class in this association, in this relationship? What is the role of the author? Oh, well, the author writes, you know, that's, that's his role. And what's the, what's the role of the book in this association? Well, the book is written by, right? Again, these, these kinds of things is for documentation purposes, right? Uh, UML is a, you know, it's a diagram language for documenting and discussing and talking about how, uh, what are the relationships and, and what is the structure of the data. Um, we, we, yeah, we can, we can, in addition to naming the, uh, the association, we can also uh, establish the multiplicity, you know, how many uh, participate in this relationship, right? Is it, is it just one, is it many? Here we're saying that many authors participate with many books, right? You could have maybe no authors, uh, but if, there's a, if, there, if there isn't a relationship, there's at least one book, okay? Um, um, and one particular type of relationship that is very, very common is the one to many relationship, right? Where you might specify there's a one instance of a class related to many instances of some other class. Like for instance, here's a person who might have multiple phones, right? Or phone numbers, right? One is for my personal phone number. The other might be at my work, right? Uh, so, and, and so I, I might have many records, one person associated to many records with uh, of phone records, yes? Uh, or you might have a many-to-many. -many. So again, these are very two of the most common types of, uh, of, uh, of, of associations, right? The one-to-many and the many-to-many. -many. In UML, you establish it by providing uh, stars on either end of the association. You're saying that many actors are related to many movies. And the way you interpret this, right? You're, you're trying to capture the fact that one actor could be acting in many movies uh, or you can, or, and at the same time, a, a particular movie might be associated with many actors, right? So it's a many to many a relationship between, uh, between actors and movies. And this is how you would capture it with star on either end. Uh, now, many, many times the, um, many times when you have a many to many, uh, it is the case that obviously at some point you wanna convert this into uh, some implementation, yes? And whether it's a Java implementation or SQL implementation or XML or JSON or whatever, whatever technology you're gonna implement it, uh, oftentimes something that can be represented graphically cannot be implemented in concrete you know, with, with whatever technology you choose. Right? So for instance, in Java, this is easy to implement. You just have arrays on both sides, right? And that's it, the di this diagram is perfect for a Java implementation, uh, but it's not so for SQL. So oftentimes we need to convert something that is perfectly fine in a um, in UML actors and movies uh, like this actor movie, right? Oops, right, They're like this relationship, actor, you know, star, star movie here, actor, star, star movie. Um, and oftentimes you need to convert it into an equivalent diagram that uh, can, can be easily implemented in whatever target technology uh, you are, you're, you're considering. So in, in our case, uh, this class is mostly interested in, in converting these class diagrams into a concrete SQL create statement, right? That creates these tables and foreign keys and primary keys the way we worked on it uh, last week, right? So, so to do that conversion, we, we use a, a concept called to reify. Reify meaning to make concrete, meaning something that is conceptual, Right, it's a uh, graphical that it works on paper. You know, how do we make how do we make that something that is very easy to draw on paper? How do we convert it into something that it can actually implement? Uh, so, so this example here is that we're converting, we're reifying the actor to movies. Uh, we're converting a, a one many to many relationship. We're converting it into two one to many relationships. Right, a, and we are and, and to implement that, we we add a an intermediate class here, right? And we're saying that uh, this, this, this casting here is, is kind of like a mapping class saying that which actors are casted in what movie. We're saying, hey, that, that actor over there is casted in that movie, right? And, and again, this would only be useful uh, because we know that the, our target audience might be SQL folks, right? That might be implementing tables, right? And we know that we, they can't implement this over here, okay? Uh, association classes are also uh, very useful to, as an alternative mechanism for, 
for uh, capturing many to many. Uh, so here's a many to many. Again, many to many, you just you just do star star, uh, but uh, definitely you can reify by 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 adding an, an additional class in there. Uh, now, if it's a if if you if you if you're only just mapping and saying you know what actor is acting in what movie and that's it that's all you're doing right you're mapping one to the other okay then then definitely this uh, this diagram works just fine right but if you in addition you start uh, not only establishing uh, a mapping between one instance and another instance but you start adding additional attributes okay then there is an alternative way to document that and it's this way, right? You have you have the many to many. There it is, the author and books, right? Many authors, many books. But instead of putting the the reified class in between, right? You put it to one side on the left hand side, and then you use this dash, the, these dashes. Um, and um, I'm not gonna really ask you to uh, to to implement this. And um, I just want you to know, right? If you see this kind of diagram in a class diagram, I want you to learn on how it is that you interpret it. It is a many to many, just like any other many to many, but because I have additional fields, because I have additional fields, uh, it's referred to not as a mapping class, we call it an association class, right? That we are describing the association, right? We're saying that this author in this book, uh, you know, as they edit and they keep track of all that editing because they might want to undo or, or, or make additional edits to their previous edits, Right, uh, they want to keep track of all those things, and so so they might want to timestamp it. They want to know what did they change over time, right? So so that's an example. Here's an, here's another example. This is an example that uh, uh, contrasts the mapping classes and the association classes. So this is the same mapping class that we saw earlier, right? We have actor and movie. And this is a reified version of a many to many, right? So this this casting class is playing the role of a mapping class, right? It's mapping actors to movies. And notice that there are no attributes in between here. See that there are no attributes? Uh, and uh, so this is a purely mapping class, right? And you would implement it in, a, in, a, in SQL with a mapping table. And the mapping table would have foreign keys, right? Pointing to the actor, pointing to the movie, saying which actor is related to what movie. And that would be referred to as a mapping table, which comes exactly from a mapping class. Uh, now, if uh, if that table would have other attributes, for instance, we might we might want to capture the fact that uh, not only does this actor is acting in that movie, but we might want to capture maybe their role, okay, um, or maybe if they won a um, an Oscar for it or or nomination. Right? So now we're getting into a little more detail about the cast, the casting, right? We are describing that relationship, that association. Not only are we saying that this actor is is acting in that movie, but we're additionally, uh, you know, describing that relationship. You know, maybe the role that you played, right? Whether you you were nominated, nominated, whether you won an Oscar for that for that casting, right? So, so we we don't we don't draw it this way. Instead, we draw it this other way. Although you will see many times that uh, folks get lazy and won't actually use this version, they will still use this other version, right? Uh, of, uh, uh, of, of drawing it this way. And they will, you know, we'll you'll, you'll see fields here as well. But I just want you to, you know, feel comfortable reading these class diagrams. You know, if you see an association uh, or if you see a mapping class, right? Uh, to understand that they're both implementations of many to many, okay? And, um, and usually this has, a, a, this was, drawn like this because it was reified, because it was going to be implemented as a, uh, as a table, right? And we had to reify it. Uh, and this, this, uh, this you know, if, if, if in addition, you have other fields in there, uh, such as role or, or, or things like that, then you, you would capture it using this association class like that. Okay, again, I want you to feel comfortable reading these, uh, these diagrams. Um, aggregation is, um, is an, an, a, uh, establishes whether there is um, not only an association between two classes, right? But it also establishes whether um, uh, one is made up of, of, uh, of the other, right? There that, that um, we, we want to be able to document not only that there's a relationship between, the, between one and many, usually it's a one to many, 
but also we would like to establish whether there is a dependency, a life cycle dependency, right? That, that um, you know, if you remove one of them, right? Uh, you know, what happens to the other ones, right? So for instance, here's an example. Uh, if you have a, a person, um, I'm sorry, if you have an order, right? That uh, has many products in the order. So the order is saying that you want, um, you know, this product and you want two of those and you want a burrito, two burritos, um, a, uh, and you want some tacos and you want some, uh, you know, uh, you have, you have a, a, a whole bunch of orders and, and, and it'll have the quantity and it will have how many of you want of each one of the products. Yes. Now, so, so definitely one order is going to have many products related to it. Yes. And, and so here we're establishing uh, that this dish is an, an aggregation. And what we mean by that is that, say you have an order one, two, three, that is listing product A and B, and you have order two, three, four, and you have product X, Y, Z, right? What happens if we remove the order? If the order is canceled and it's gone? Well, the product still should still exist, right? Those products are still on the shelf, right? I never touched them, right? Just the order went away. So the way we establish that there is no life dependency, that if you delete one, it does not affect the, the others, the way you capture that is through an aggregation, right? And you, you document it using this, this empty diamond here, right? You're saying that one order has many products and there is no dependency, no life dependency. Deleting one will not cascade or propagate deleting to the other. But you might say, well, when would I want to delete, right? When, why, why, when would I uh, want to be able to propagate, right? Here's an example. Composition is the opposite, right? It's, it's saying, yes, you still have one too many, uh, but I do want to document that there is a life dependency, right? That if I remove one, I do want that to propagate to the, to the others, right? So for instance, here's an example where you might have um, a person, right? That has many emails, I don't know why, it's, I think, I think I meant to say phones here. Uh, and, and then I put here phone phone numbers and I put here email. Sorry about that, I'll fix that. But imagine I had uh, you know Alice and Bob and each one has multiple emails or multiple phone numbers or whatnot, right? And I have that on records in my database, right? Now, would it make sense that if I remove Alice, would it make sense to keep around Alice's phone numbers or emails? Probably not. Right? It makes sense that if I remove a parent record, right, and then all the other records that are associated to the parent, that they should be purged as well. Right? So if I remove Alice, it makes no sense to keep Alice's data around or Bob and keep them around. So the way we document that, that dependency, uh, that, that uh, deleting one cascades down to the, to the others is by, by using this, um, this, this diamond, but it's a filled in diamond. See that? It's a darkened diamond. Okay. Uh, any questions? All right. So one, la one last thing here is the, uh, what, when you are right, uh, drawing these, these diagrams, you also have to consider who your target audience is, right? If, um, right, it, are, I mean, are you talking to a bunch of Java developers, C Sharp developers? Are you talking about folks that are, you know, building these databases and creating all these tables? And, the, and you know, are, are you talking to a DBA? So depending on your, your, your audience, right, you might want to be more or less verbose, right? A, or, or, or add additional uh, things to your diagram to make them a little more understandable to your audience, right? Now, if you're, if you're talking to a pure object-oriented audience, right, that they're fine with UML, they, they, under, uh, they um, you know, they're not, you, you haven't yet decided whether you're going to implement this in Java or C Sharp or any particular language, you haven't decided on the, on the technology stack, uh, you don't know if you're going to use uh, relational databases or non-relational databases or maybe XML or JSON, you don't know yet, right? Uh, so at a very conceptual level, for instance, here, the way you would document a many-to-many -many relationship is just you just say star, star, and that's it. That's enough. That's enough to, to establish that between the actor and the movie, there is a many-to-many -many relationship, okay? The first, the actor has a first name and a last name, and the movie has a title and a plot. So notice, right, that, that uh, the lack of feels Right, additional attributes in either movie or actor 
neither one of them do we have attributes that are referencing the other. See that? There are no attributes in actor that are referencing movie, and there are no attributes in movie that are referencing actors. Instead, this line right here, this association line and the multiplicity, that's plenty. That's plenty to know that there's a many-to-many -many relationship between the two. And, and then we leave the actual implementation decision, we leave it to the engineer, whether this is the, a, a, a Java developer, right? Or you know, SQL developer, whatever, whatever they need to actually implement this diagram, they'll have to you know, ad ad adhere to the idiosyncrasies of their particular technology, right? If this is Java, Right, so if, the, if this is Java, right, well, to implement this, they, they would need to uh, implement it using some array, right? So for instance, in the actor, you could have like a movie array, movies array, and on the movie, you would have an array of actors, okay? But again, this, uh, these are implementation details, right, that are specific to the technology that you chose, right? Um, or you, the, 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 the Java developer might have preferred to implement it not with arrays, but maybe having an intermediate class uh, that has references to the actor and a movie, maybe implementing a mapping class, right? A class that um, the actor and the movie have references to the casting, right? And then the cast, casting has those references to the actor and the movie saying, hey, that actor is casted in this movie, right? So these are two particular implementations of the same thing, right? These are two uh, implementation details on how the developer might have chosen to implement this. But in UML, in pure UML, this diagram would be plenty, right? This is where it would end, right? Now, obviously, if, you know, when, when, the, when the business analyst is drawing these, these diagrams, you know, if, they're, if they know they're going to be talking to a Java developer audience, they might go ahead and add the additional attributes in there only to make it more palatable uh, and more easy to to uh, you know to to visualize for their target audience, such as a Java developer. If instead they're talking to a SQL developer, right? Uh, they know that that um, that this implementation, this this diagram over here, is you know definitely not implementable in uh, SQL. You can't implement that in SQL, right? Uh, so they know that they might go ahead and do the reification for them, right? They will, they will create a mapping, um, they will create a mapping table or mapping class and say, uh, you know, there's a, instead of having a, a many to many, they replace it with a reified version of this and say, okay, well, I'm going to convert this from a many to many into two one to many's and one to many's. Again, you know, because of the SQL audience, right? And then I even go a little further. Notice that here, the business analyst has decided that maybe the, this, um, these, these lines and the multiplicity, that's enough, right? That's enough to let you know that there's a one-to-many relationship there, yes? But to further clarify for their audience, maybe you know, some folks that might be a little more dense uh, than others, they might go ahead and even add primary keys in each one of the, of the classes. And they might even go ahead and, and implement foreign keys in there. See that? Now the, the business Alice who's making these drawings is, is going way out of, you know, beyond, right, in documenting this and, and really putting it, you know, in, in, um, you know, in very low level terms on how this might be implemented, right? He's, you know, the business Alice is now committing into a particular implementation, right? Saying, oh, well, this definitely is, you know, these are almost tables, right? They're almost not a class diagram anymore, right? These are almost tables with foreign keys, primary keys, right? And and um, and, and 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 converting this uh, from a class, this class diagram to a set of tables would be trivial, right? Um, I, I just wanted to for you to understand that depending on your audience, uh, you know, you might you might get away with uh, staying this high level. Right, and and then letting the, the 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 engineer decide how is it that they're going to particularly implement this. Okay, any questions? This makes sense. All right, let's uh, keep going. 
All right, so I think we have enough, right, to get started and, and take a look at the assignment for this week, All right? So let's take a look at this assignment. Database two, uh, DB2, designing a database, right? The, the intent of this assignment is to give you a chance to practice some of the terminology and some of the concepts that we are gonna be discussing all this week about designing databases, right? Um, we're only gonna cover just a few things, right? It's not, you know, the, the, I don't wanna make the assignment too big that, uh, um, you know, I wanna make sure you, that you do are able to complete it in the allotted time. Uh, we're only gonna be covering three things, right? We're gonna be covering creating a simple class, right? We're gonna be covering uh, doing a one-to-many, and doing a many and many, okay? Uh, now, obviously there's many more things that we, we would like to add and we will be covering that in later assignments, right? For instance, um, at some point I wanna do aggregation, composition, right? Doing association classes, things like that, you know, inheritance. Uh, so we'll get a chance to practice that as we go further, right? So this, this, uh, this, first, assi this uh, first design assignment uh, it's going to have you do some simple design, and as we progress, we'll we'll uh, we'll introduce uh, additional more challenging uh, designs. Okay. Uh, now the the all the assignments are following the a similar template, and the template is that uh, we will first will first handhold you right and do um, do a task for you. Okay, which will be part of the assignment. You will have to complete. A, a task that is fully done, right? We're just gonna walk you through through everything you need to do. And once we show you how to do something, then we're gonna ask you to do it on your own, okay? We're gonna say, okay, having seen this example, right? Uh, go and try to do it on your own, right? And so there are three examples here. One is for a simple class, one of them is for a one-to-many, and one is for a many-to-many, -many, okay? So let's take a look at some of these, right? Now the, the learning goals is that you know, we want to create a, a unified modeling language class diagram. At the end of this uh, of this assignment, you will have a single class diagram, right? And we're going to walk you through uh, implementing implementing several of these as you go. Okay. Uh, some UML class diagrams. Actually, I I just uh, started using this this tool. Um, uh, Lucid, Lucid chart. I think it's a, a phenomenon, phenomenus, phenomenon um, a tool. It's a great tool, and uh, and um, I I have the paid version, uh, but I think the the uh, the free version allows you to create you know quite a few diagrams before it asks you to pay for it. Uh, so definitely take a look at that of uh, the Lucid chart. Uh, all right, so the first assignment asks you to do the following. So designing a, a database with a email class diagram. So this, it asks you, uh, first it says, okay, we're, we're building kind of like a blogging application, right? Where you can post a blog, you know, users can post a blog, right? And folks can then um, post to a blog, right? So you can you can create any any number of blogs, right? So, and a blog can, can have a name, maybe can have a topic, when it was created and when it was updated, right? So. Uh, so this could be the name of the blog, right? This could be the topic. The topic could be, uh, you know, about cars, uh, uh, space, and, you know, a neur neural network connection uh, between computers and human brains, right? It could be different topics. So me as a user, I can have many blogs, yes? Uh, and that's that's a topic. And that's, for, for instance, this would be a great uh, opportunity to have an enumerated data type, right? Where you can, you know, have from a, uh, a valid, set of topics that you can choose. But for now, let's just have a, a basic string. And so, so, and this is the equivalent class diagram of us having you uh, describe a, a class uh, and the various attributes and their data types, okay? Uh, so having done that, uh, we, we're gonna ask you, now you try, look for the now you try, right? Uh, where we, we say, okay, create now a post class, right, that has the following attributes, title, post, created, and updated, okay? And so you will create something similar, right? You'll create a, a, a box just like this uh, that will have a title and the post, right, the actual post uh, and the created and updated. So you'll fill it in, you'll, you'll, um, you'll create a, a diagram. 
And the diagram now will have two classes, right? You will have the, the blog and the, and the post, right? So for instance, here in Lucid, right? So let's uh, create a, um, uh, you might, you know, you might, uh, you might do something like this, right? You, here's the, here's the blog class that, that we are giving you, right? And you implement the attributes and the attributes is that it has a name, that is a string uh, that has a topic, right? That is also a string uh, that it has uh, when it was created and when it was updated. Okay, so in that same class diagram, we ask you to implement another class, okay? And we ask you to call it blog, uh, sorry, post, and to add the attributes there. All right, so I'm gonna let you do that. I'm gonna let you do that, okay? Um, then the assignment goes on to say, okay, well, now let's play around with one-to-many, right? Uh, so in the one-to-many, uh, this says that uh, a user can create many different blogs, right? So again, um, you know, I can maintain several blogs, one based on with a topic of space, the other one cars, and the other one, you know, computer brain to computer interfaces, right? And, um, uh, and so it's, a, it's, it's asking me here to create a one-to-many relationship between a user and a blog. Now the user, that's a class that you worked on in the previous assignment, right? Uh, so you're gonna add it to this brand new a diagram that you're working on, All right? So it makes this a little smaller. Okay, and uh, so that user class that you worked on in the previous assignment had attributes such as, uh, let's see, what were the attributes? Uh, first name, last name, created and updated. All right? so this might be first name, right, as a string, last name. Notice the naming convention. Uh, we are using camel casing, uh, which means that each word is, is capitalized. The, the first letter of each word is capitalized except the first one. Right? So first is not capitalized, but then N is capitalized. Right? This is a very common uh, naming convention for programming languages like Java, C Sharp, they all follow that naming convention, right? Uh, and then having done that, uh, we, we create a one-to-many relationship right here, right? We say that uh, this is a many, right? So this is a none here, and we want to add some multiplicity. So let's add a multiplicity. And this is one to many, okay? There we go. All right, so, so yeah, so that's, that's, uh, that's that. Uh, did that make sense, right? The one to many. Now we ask you in the next part of the the, uh, the assignment, we ask you to do the same, right? Now you try it, right? Now you try it. We're saying, um, all right, now that we have the one to many between the user and blog, uh, we you know we want you to create a one to many between blog and post, right? So basically we want you to create a, a one to many between this blog and this post, right? So again, you're gonna follow the same kinds of uh, what, we, what we just did, right? You're gonna create a, uh, a line just like we did, right? And, and annotate it as one-to-many between the blog and the post, right? So one user can have many blogs and then one blog can have many, many posts. Yes? All right, so you'll do that on your own. Uh, then, then we're gonna have a many-to-many -many relationship. And the example that we give, give here is that, um, is that uh, we, you know, a user right, can rate many posts, right? Where, where, um, and the way we implement that, if it's if it's just just a UML, right, of, of rating user rating a post, if it's just a simple uh, many or many, right, we would do something like this, right? We would draw a line between the user and the post, right, and we call it a day. Well, no, we we would uh, add multiplicity, right? We would say maybe many here and many there, okay, right? If, if, you're, if you're just saying that, uh, that a user is related to many posts, if you're just saying that, then that's enough, right? But if you need to specify what kind of relationship 
uh, are we are we looking at? Right, then we need to reify this, right? We need to convert this into, you know, add an additional class in between these two folks, right? That that can can um, can specify how what kind of relationship there is, right? So the way we're going to do that is by adding an additional class here, right? So let's uh, let's copy this, right? And the class is going to be called a rating class, okay? And the rating is says you know specifies uh, when the user is rating a, a post, right? They can either like the post or dislike the post. Maybe they can give it like a five star rating, right? Uh, uh, it, you know, and turn on uh, some stars and scores, you know, from zero to five, or maybe they can leave a, a simple comment on that post, right? And the way we we going to implement that, right, is by removing this, right, and going. Oops, right. It's this one here. We're gonna change this to go instead to go from the user to the rating. There we go. We're gonna convert that that one many to many. We're gonna convert it into two. Oops, uh, into two one to many. Okay, we're gonna go from here to here, right? And this is um, none here, and we're gonna do a multiplicity. And uh, multiplicity, where's the multiplicity? Huh? Oh, there it is, multiplicity. So we're gonna convert a, a one many to many into two one to many's. And it's always, oops, it goes always um, brr, many. The one side goes, uh, the, the, the many side, the, the star, right? The star goes, always in on the class that is doing the mapping, okay? So this new rating has stars on either side. See that? And the other ones have a one and a one. Make sense? Okay, and this would have uh, the, what is it? It has the uh, light, likes, and this is a Boolean. And this is um, score, which is gonna be an integer. Uh, and then created, and update it. Okay, makes sense? All right, so we did that for you. And so what we're asking you to do is, is you know, having used that as an example, uh, do one on your own, right? You know, so now you try it, right? So we're gonna ask you to, instead of, uh, in addition to a rating, we're gonna ask you to create a class called reply that establishes a many to many between a user and a post. Okay. And that reply will be an additional class that you will create. Okay, so maybe up here. All right, you're gonna create a um a reply here, right, with whatever attributes we ask you to do, and and, and implement a many to many. Right between the the reply should have a reply created and updated, and that it's a many to many between a user and a post, right? And the idea is that the reply is going to allow us to say, uh, not only give you a like or score or a very brief comment, but is going to allow me to enter in a discussion about a post, right? And and I'm, you know, I might have a political view, and I'm going to reply to a post, and then other users are gonna be able to reply on my post, right? And I'm gonna be able to reply on them, right? So this, it's gonna be this hierarchical um, way of doing that, but we'll leave the, the self-referencing a little later. We're just gonna have a user be able to reply on many posts and a post can be replied by many users. So I'm many to many between user and post, okay? Uh, now I did say that, I did say that when, um, when you have this many to many, right? And you have attributes here, an alternative way that we could have covered this, an alternative way that we could have documented this, um, it's an equivalent, right? It's equivalent way, is that we would have kept the many to many between user and post, keep the many to many, okay? Uh, many to many, and then have a rating class be an association, right? Where, let me move this a little down further. 
there's an alternative, okay? It doesn't mean that um, you, know, you don't have to do it this way, but definitely you, you, you could have you done it this way. We have the rating, right? And then in the middle here, would have get, done an association like that. See that? So this would be an association class and this would be with dotted line. Okay, that would be an association class. So this would be an alternative way of documenting the same exact thing, all right? Uh, but again, you, you see it implemented in different ways or in both ways, right? Uh, the more modern way of doing it is using this association class like this. This, but this is still widely used, this, uh, this, this way of documenting it with just having a mapping class in the middle, right? And then uh, multiple attributes there. This is a little bit easier to read for DBAs and data analysts and folks that are imp implementing tables because this is perfectly, right? This looks just like a table. I can implement this foreign keys over here is, you know, I, I have to do a more conceptual leap on his, hmm, how do I implement this, right? What is this lines and dotted line over there? What is that, right? Uh, so either one is, it's just fine. I did, I do want you to uh, be able to, you know, uh, distinguish between the two, what is the same and what is different. Okay. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove it because it might make this uh, hard to read. Okay. All right. Excellent. So that that is it, I believe. Um, so at the end, you're gonna have one single diagram, one single class diagram that will have a, a one to many. It'll have a many to many, and it'll have it should have one, two, three, four, five classes in total. Right. Your class diagram should have five classes. Uh, and print that, well, not printed, print it as a PDF on your machine and then upload the PDF uh, for this assignment, okay? That, that makes sense. Uh, everybody, everybody understand the assignment for this week? Any questions? All right, yes, okay, awesome. All right, let's keep going. All right, so we talk about UML class diagrams. Let's now talk about, we have the assignment, all, all set. Let's move on to some more theoretical stuff. Let's see, something on the chat. What platform are we using for this assignment? Um, I, would, I would use Lucid. I think that's one of the better UML uh, diagramming tools out there. Uh, but uh, you could also use, another one that I, I like to use is um, uh, Visual. Visual Paradigm is also a nice UML and it's free. And it's a, okay, Lucid, I, I would use Lucid, Lucid app. What platform are we using for this assignment? Yeah, Lucid charts, I would use that. Is there a standard software using this? Rate? Yeah, Lucid, Lucid is very good. Uh, Second question, is it okay to use Lucid? Yes, of course, that's, that's what I just, I was using right now. Uh, should we be using the class boxes with the three compartments and just leave the bottom section empty or just use the boxes? Yeah, you, you could use um, the uh, either, yeah, you could use uh, from Lucid. Yeah, this one too. This one's uh, technically an interface. Now, if you drag this one is an interface, uh, but you can, you can remove the stereotype here. You can just remove the stereotype and, and then you have just, just two parts, right? So you don't have the methods. Well, actually, this only has the methods, but uh, but you can use this as just being the attributes. Okay, so you can totally use that instead. Okay. Uh, all right, excellent. Let's uh, keep going. All right, so uh, after the um, after that, after having looked at um, the the UML class diagrams. Let's talk about data design. All right, this is going to be a little more theoretical, more conceptual, uh, and a and and so so um, you know just covering all the concepts. It'll be some of it will be a little bit of a review of one to many and many to many, uh, but uh, but you know much more thorough uh, coverage of the of the whole topic of designing databases. Okay, all right. So here's data design. Now, now, obviously, you know we have we have to um, keep in mind our, you know, where we're going, right? What we what we want to end up doing is that you know once we design these diagrams, we want to end up with a 
with a uh, with a whole bunch of tables, right? At the at the end of the day, right? And and we start drawing these pretty pictures and all these these diagrams and lines and whatnot. But at the end of the day, we want to end up with with some SQL uh, tables, right? With foreign keys, primary keys, uh, properties, and, and be able to insert and delete and and select and whatnot, right? So that's where we are going. But a good place to start is by first designing the the the, the database. Okay, it's a it's, it's actually a bad it would be a bad idea um, to get started with just creating the tables, right? It's much easier to start with the diagrams, right? Make changes to the diagrams and talk about it with the diagram, right? And then try to convert that into the tables, uh, as opposed to convert you know creating the tables and trying to design in the in the uh, relational database, right? So we're trying to go from this conceptual model to a relational model, right? And by relational means that we're gonna have foreign keys and primary keys, you know, where records are referencing each other, pointing to each other. Uh, that's where we're going, right? Uh, to, a, to a relational model, that's a, the, the, of how we wanna break, the, break up the data. But we're gonna start up with this conceptual model okay, with the uh, UML. Okay, so first, you know, say we want to design some tables, right? And, and, and so, for instance, with a really simple uh, example, we, we, we might have a, a collection of CDs, you know, if anybody remembers what a CD is, uh, where uh, you, know, you, you might have a whole bunch of songs from a whole bunch of bands, and you've been collecting all, this, all these CDs, and you want to create a little database uh, to keep track of them, okay? Uh, and um, does, does anybody? Somebody not know what a CD is? <laughs> um, you know, it might be uh, too old. Uh, you know, uh, are, are folks even using CDs anymore? Uh, I imagine not. Um, let's see on the chat. I'm curious. Give it a year or two. <laughs> you have a few. Okay. Uh, so anyway, so so uh, I, I actually have a large collection of CDs. And, uh, and so each CD uh, has all uh, many tracks, right? I don't know, I might have 10 to 20 tracks. And so if I wanna create a database, you know, this might be a, you know, a first approach or first prototype of what I might create as a database, right? I might want to create maybe a table that uh, calls CD and uh, it might have a unique identifier for the CD. It might have the, you know, the title of the CD, uh, when it was released, you know, you know who, who the band is that was playing in that CD, all the songs by the band and, and the genre, whether it's you know rock and roll or salsa, merengue, whatever it is, and um, and then and then you can have um, the the tracks, you know, in each, you know, the ten or twenty tracks, and I would have maybe in a separate table called tracks, right, where I have I have a unique identifier for the track, I have the track number, you know, track number one, two, three, the title of the song, you know, how long is that song. And to establish the relational, right, the relationship between these two tables, right? Again, I'm using a relational database. That's what's called a relational model. The, the reason it's called relational is because I am establishing a relationship between two records, one record that, or one row that lives in one table called CD and another record, a whole bunch of records that are stored in another table. And the way we link them is that one field in one table is referencing another field in some other table, right? We're creating the relationship. That's why we call it the relational model. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. So, so these these usually we refer to these unique identifiers and we call them primary keys. And we'll 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 take a look at that jargon a little later. We call this the primary key. And notice that they are bold, italic, and they're underlined. Right. Whereas foreign keys, foreign keys is a field. It's an attribute, it's a property that has a value of some primary key, so that it's pointing. Right. This you can you can think of this as a reference. This is referencing that. Okay. Uh, so let's uh, let's put a you know, let's make a big arrow saying, hey, this this CD ID. Right, it's because it's referencing that that other field over there. Okay. Um, yeah, so excellent. So, so what if I start, at, you know, I, I create my database, my, my two tables, and I start inserting, you know, I go through my, each one of my, my CDs, right? And I start entering data into my brand new database, right? I feel so, um, so smart, right, that I've designed this. But then, 
you know, as I as I go through my 300 CDs, right, I find that a couple of these don't fit nicely into my in, into my database, right? For instance, um, I find a CD that is a you know like a best of that has a whole bunch of tracks from multiple CDs, right? And um, and then and then I find I find another CD that has a whole bunch of genre. Right. Well, you know, the first half has rock and roll, and the second half at the end, uh, you know, has has some, another genre. It might might have some salsa, some merengue, and so it has a mixture of multiple genres that doesn't fit nicely into my database. Right? It says, wait a minute, this genre now, what do I put there? Um, you know, it's not. I thought, you know, at first that the CD, a CD, you know, in my simple-minded way of thinking, that a CD would only be of a single genre. But now I'm finding a couple of CDs that don't fit the the structure of that data. Okay, uh, that a CD might actually have multiple genres. Right. So what do I do with that? Or it might be that a a, a, a CD that has multiple performers, right, uh, from multiple bands. So I have, I have a, like a rock and roll uh, CD, and I have at the beginning I have some Led Zeppelin, at the end I have you know some Rolling Stones, right. And, it's, and so what what do I do now? You know to put in my you know who the band is, right? So that doesn't work either. So even even something as simple as just a couple of, of CDs that I want to enter in my database, my relational model already is failing. Okay, uh, so so instead of working with tables, right, uh, a better thing to do is to instead work graphically in, for instance, using UML, right? Because you know erasing something and moving some classes around and some attributes around is so much easier. And it's easier to look at it graphically, right? Than to have, you know, some code and, and you're working with, with code. So, uh, so usually it's easier to start with the class diagram first, right? And then, and then have mechanisms that would allow you to convert those class diagrams into a relational model. Okay. So definitely start off with a UML, even, even if um, you need to, uh, you know, if you already created the relational model, right, you already created the tables and you want to make the modifications, it's usually easier to try to recreate that, that relational model, those tables back to UML, right? And then once you have it graphically represented, make your changes right, in UML and then convert it back into the relational model, right? Uh, so try to avoid making des design decisions uh, from the tables, right? You'll, you'll, you know, you'll get all confused and try to understand all the all these foreign keys and primary keys, you'll get all bungled up, right? So it's easier to always work with UML. Uh, so here's an example that we are gonna be using throughout the semester. Uh, we're gonna be using a, a class diagram that represents a, um, a, a university, okay? So in this university, uh, we have the following classes that represent certain things, okay? We have the, uh, uh, someone's at the door. Let me close the door just a second. All right, so th in this uh, database, we have the following classes. We have a class that represents the students. Uh, we have uh, classes that represents the various departments in the college uh, or the university. We have uh, various courses that this department or college uh, teaches. For each course, we have uh, multiple sections, right? So for instance, this course I'm teaching, uh, database design has two sections, right? And students are typically enrolled in, in their sections, right? So, and a student can be enrolled in multiple sections, right? You might be enrolled in section two for CS3200 uh, or and, you know, enrolled in section four uh, for 4550, right? And so we have like a mapping table here, this enrollment, um, Class, class here, right, that is mapping what students are enrolled in what section. So this is a many-to-many, -many, right, that says, uh, that relates students to sections. And there's a couple of one-to-manys saying that one department can have any number of students. Uh, so this is, this department is not a mapping table, right? It's saying that, that one department has many students. Uh, also says that one department has many courses, right? And one course has many sections. Right, so the only mapping table here is the enrollment table. See that? All of these are one to many, one to many, one to many, one to many. This, this many to many over here, right, has is be, uh, uh, presumably is the result of having reified, right, 
um, a relationship between student and section, right? Students are enrolled in sections, right? And we wanna specify, you know, in that enrollment, um, I like to know what grade you got, right? So, so we, we, we reified it, we split it up into its own table uh, and, and added grade here. Notice, notice how you hear me uh, kind of like uh, go between uh, the UML class diagram and tables, right? Almost interchangeably, all right? Uh, and, uh, and yes, you, 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 you know, after multiple um, uh, times that you've played around with this, right, you, you'll see that, the, that the, 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 the difference between the two starts to blur, right? And the idea is that, is that uh, you're, not, you're not working with actual tables, right, with foreign keys and primary keys, but you're thinking about those tables in a conceptual way using UML, all right? Uh, and then you have mechanisms that can easily go between those two worlds, all right? Um, all right, so carnality, same thing that we covered this already, right? We have N and M, one, one to many, and you know, zero to zero many, one, one to one, right? We, we already talked about this, so I'm not gonna cover that again. Uh, one to many, we, we talked about, right? That uh, establishes a one to many relationship between two classes. And we put the one on the one side, and then we put the star on the many side, right? So, so this is a classical one to many. Uh, we also have one that we have not talked about earlier, the one to one, right? Where uh, one instance might be related to another instance, right? One to one, right? For instance, a student might have a permit, okay? And that permit might cover things such as the license plate of the car, the car model, maybe even the color of the car, things like that, right? And you only get one permit, okay? Now, somebody might say, well, you know, why, why even split it out to a different class, right? Why not even have these attributes as part of the original class, right? Why even waste an entire class capturing that? We might as well just put it in the, in the student as, a, as a ad, additional attributes, yes? Actually, that's a good argument, right? Now, now usually what, when, when, you, when you describe a concept such as a student, you only wanna capture things that are specific, that describe that, uh, that entity, that, that, um, uh, that, that concept, that idea, right? And, and well, not all students, right? You, 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 and you, you, and you wanna be as, as, a, you know, as general as possible, right? You're, you're describing a student, a student, this could be a student in kindergarten, right? Or student in, uh, middle school and certainly they're not driving right so you want to you want to capture things that are specific to all students and certainly permits uh, are not particular to all students right so so that's why it's not really pertaining to a student it's its own concept so might as well put it outside into its own uh class okay uh now this is still a, a one to a one to one but here instead of a uh, you know, explicitly declaring that this is a one here, notice that we're saying zero to one, right? And what we're saying here is that the permit is optional. Here we're saying that every student gets a permit. If you have a student, that student has a permit, right? Whereas over here, we're saying that, oh, it's optional, right? Not all students might have a permit, right? So it's a zero to one, right? So there might be a record for a permit for that student, but there might not be. Maybe there is no record because that, that student is too young and doesn't have a permit or maybe they're commuting so, uh, some, some other way. Uh, the many to many, right? We covered this already. We have a star and star on either, on either end. Um, so some jargon here that you might, uh, you might um, uh, hear, uh, you know, especially if you're reading a book or you're reading uh, some documentation online, you sometimes will, will hear um, the relationship strength, okay? Uh, as either being strong or weak. Okay, strong or weak. And by strong, what we mean is that we know exactly how many are participating in a relationship. Whereas weak means that we're not quite sure how many are participating, right? So for instance, uh, here, you know, how many students are participating, right? We don't know. So we say that's a weak relationship, right? And how many departments are there, you know, for, for a student? We don't know either. So we say that this is a weak to weak association, right? Here, we know that there is one permit for every one student, right? That's a very strong association, right? We're saying that there's a strong to strong association, 
right? This is a strong to weak association because we don't know if we would have a permit, right? So it's weak, okay? Um, so yeah, so uh, many to many usually is referred to as a week to week, right? Because it goes to star to star. Uh, also a one to one on one where on one of those sides we might have zero to one, right? So maybe it's an optional. Uh, or we have, you know, either one on both sides or we know we have two and three, that's also strong, right? We know that two of these, right, are related to three of those, right? That's also a strong to strong. If you know exactly how many are participating, we say that it's a strong relationship, okay? Uh, some other examples, you might have weak, weak to strong. So weak to strong, right? So here's another weak to strong or strong to weak, right? The other way around or strong, strong might be one, one or two, four, right? So those, again, some jargon, right? That, uh, that you might want to know about. A uh, bit off topic, uh, but do we have a book for this? Time? No, there's no, there's no book. Everything you need to know is, is in the slides. Yeah, so visual reading class diagram. So, so yeah, so as, as you know, as a, uh, as, as one might say, right, a, um, a picture is worth a thousand words, right? And, and so a picture is worth a thousand lines of code. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so what, what, what class diagrams uh, bring you is that they allow you to visually inspect the relationships between uh, the various, various classes or various entities that are related uh, one, one another, right? So by looking at the class diagrams, you might be able to determine that, hey, students are enrolled in sections. Uh, we can determine that all courses, uh, what are the courses? If you give me the student, I'll know the, all the courses that they enrolled in. And you can, you can determine whether they, you know, what year they, they took that particular course. Uh, maybe you can determine also the size of the section for a particular course. But also by inspecting the class diagram, you might, you might realize that there are certain things that you can't know from the class diagram. For instance, uh, you don't know if the student was in computer science, right? And they moved over to civil engineering, right? Or vice versa. The class diagram doesn't capture that, right? It only tells you the current uh, uh, department that they're enrolled, right? But it doesn't tell you that if there's a switch at some point, right? Also, it doesn't capture anything about advisors, right? If a student is being advised by a particular professor, it only you know, shows that a professor is teaching a course or is teaching a section, but it's not saying whether they're the advisor of that particular student, okay? So but just by inspecting, you can, you can absolutely very quickly uh, determine and see that the class diagrams allows you to do a couple of things, but not others, All right? So let's take a look at, um, um, you know, uh, at some of the things that we covered in the previous one, notice that this is a class diagram, but at some point we want to convert this into a table, right? Uh, so, so one of the things that are missing here for this being a table, right, is that this, this, these relationships, right, between the classes imply, right, that somehow, right, if I'm going to implement this in a, uh, in a table, Right, uh, that that you know the way you implement that is that the fields there there must be some field that actually establish the relationship right the relational model between the two the two tables right uh, but right now you know this is a pure UML class diagram it has no primary keys you know there's no student ID there or department ID or things like that uh, it doesn't have any foreign keys either right it's pure UML uh, and um, and, and so, so what, but we know that these, these, uh, these one-to-manys and many-to-many and whatnot, right? Those are hints that at some point we're gonna have to replace these with additional fields, right? That, that capture the details, right? Of, of these relationships, right? So how do, so this at some point is gonna be converted into something like this, right? Where you're gonna have some table called student a table called enroll, enrollments or a section, department, courses, right? And, and they're gonna be additional fields. They're gonna be additional fields that are going to specify the unique IDs that represent each student, like one, two, three, three, four, five, and four, five, six, yes? And then, and then here in the department as well, right? Um, 
and you know the courses, they're all going to have these unique identifiers, right? Notice that I've added ID to all of these. See that ID? You see that? And and the way we're going to establish this these one to many, the way it's going to be implemented. You know, when you're going to concretely implement this in tables and records, you know, inserted into a database, the way we're going to implement it is that these we're going to call primary keys and the course, right, to implement this one to many, we're going to implement and add a field here, which is going to reference, is going to reference the department that this particular course belongs to. See that? So there's department 10 here, CCIS, and web, right, is being taught, I'm sorry, uh, is, um, yeah, it's being taught by department number 10. See that? Software engineering is also being taught by department number 10, okay? Notice that that was not captured in the original class diagram. So at some point, when you get, we're going to need a mechanism to go from the design into an actual relational model that can be implemented. Yes. Uh, are the specific colors used important? No, the, the colors are entirely mine. <laughs> uh, these colors are entirely mine. And, and uh, my intention was that this gray is pointing to this gray over here. See that? Uh, same thing here. Notice this one to many here. See that? Uh, so these are the unique identifiers for the courses, you know, 5610, 4550. Right, you might we might have uh, additional, you know, three two hundred. Uh, this is um, DB design. Let's see if it fits. No, it doesn't fit. Uh, DB just DB. Right, they're all being taught by number ten. Okay, uh, and so they have these are their CIDs, the unique identifiers, and the way we establish the one to many, right, is that the section, right, has foreign keys has values that point to the course that they belong to. See that? Just like the course has these values saying that all these cores belong to department number 10, the section also has foreign keys that refer to a particular course saying that all these sections are of this course. See that, right? Uh, so that's how you implement one-to-many, right? In relational model, in the relational databases. So that's where we're going. We're not there yet. Right, uh, but that's that's where we hope to be at the end of this week. Right, that we're going to be able to design this uh, at a conceptual model using UML class diagrams, and then have some kind of algorithm or mechanism to convert this this conceptual representation into this concrete, you know, relational model in in a, in in MySQL. Okay, uh, and what about this many to many? So enrollment is a many to many. It's a mapping table. And it maps students to sections, right? And the way it maps it is that, notice this many, many, one to many, see that? Notice that on the many side, you have foreign keys, right? Just like we did here. Notice that on the many side of course, see that? We have a foreign key, see that? That points to a primary key on the one side. Same thing here, right? On the many side, you have a foreign key that references a primary key on the one side. See that? Same thing with enrollment. Enrollment is a mapping table, right? That it, that it's implementing a many to many between student and section, right? And the way we implement it, instead of going many to many here, we reified it and convert it into two one to manys. See that? Right. So remember, on the many side, right, we have a foreign key. Okay. Uh, so on the many side, we have another foreign key. See that? This first foreign key points to the students. So this student, Alice, okay, that's one, two, three, says that Alice is enrolled in. So this three, two, one is another foreign key that is pointing to what? It's pointing to the section, this three, two, one. See that? All right. So basically, this is mapping, Alice is mapping it to section three, two, one which is course five, six, seven, okay? And Alice is also enrolled in five, six, seven. And five, six, seven is this one right here, five, six, seven. That is referencing 4,500, which is software engineering. See that, right? So these foreign keys referencing other things in other tables 
meaning these foreign keys relating one record to another record relationship, right? The relational model, the relational database, yes, right? Allows us to navigate between, you know, from one table, jump to another table, and then follow the next table and follow the next table. You know, if you've done C++ or C, you know, you can think of these as these being pointers, right? Like addresses that are referencing memory spaces, right? So same thing here. We are dereferencing, right, these, uh, these values so that we can jump from one table to the next, right, following all these pointers from one to the other. And that's, and that's the relational model, right? That's how you represent it in a relational model. Okay, make sense? Did I lose anybody? Everybody okay? Um, all right, so yeah, so graphically, basically, right, these two here, right, they're both, both pointing to this one, two, three in the student. Right. Whereas this, this uh, five, six, seven, they're all referencing this one section here. So these these three students, one, two, three, three, four, five, and four, five, six. So Alice, Bob, and Chuck, right, are all enrolled. Oops, they are all enrolled in five, six, seven, meaning forty, five hundred. They're all enrolled in software engineering. Okay, and and these sections where these two student, these two. Uh, these two enrollments here, these two sections, right? Uh, they're all referencing four, five, six, right? Web development, okay? And finally, these courses, right? These two courses are being taught, right? By a, or are owned by this department, CCIS. Everybody good? All right, so how do we go? How can we go consistently starting from a class you know, having applied all, uh, all our designs and class diagrams, how do we go from one world to the other? How do we go from this, right, to this? All right, so let's do that, all right? So we wanna convert from tables, go to classes, and vice versa. We would like to go from classes to tables, okay? Uh, so yeah, so how, how do we do this? So transforming tables to class diagrams. All right, so if you have a class diagram and you have tables, they are related, right? They're somewhat one and the same, right? But different syntax, different worlds, right? So how do we do that? So classes, classes looks like they, we, we can convert it into tables. Attributes could be the tables fields. And the relationship, those lines, right? The lines and the uh, cardinality, they can be converted into foreign keys and primary keys, okay? And, and, and we often want to represent them in two different ways, right? So, uh, so for instance, let's, let's consider the simple example that we were looking earlier, right? Where we have a, um, you have a CD, right? With a unique identifier, CD ID, we have a track, a foreign key uh, of the track pointing to the CD. And let's make it a little more interesting, right? Let's, uh, let's add an additional table called lyrics, right? And lyrics, uh, it's going to have a foreign key saying that the saying that the hey the lyrics for that track these are the lyrics right this is the text right with the song all spelled out right and um, now one thing that I'd like to to enforce is that presumably you know there's only one lyric <laughs> there are only one lyrics for a particular song it's not like you have multiple lyrics for a song right so I don't want to have a foreign key, because if I have a foreign key, it means that there are many tracks for one CD that's, that establishes a one-to-many. If I have a foreign key, like over here, right? If I have a foreign key, that means that I have a one-to-many, right? So I don't, want, I don't want these lyrics to be one-to-many. There should be one lyric for one song. So the way we, we can establish that is that my foreign key is also going to be a primary key. Okay, and what we mean by that is that primary keys are unique, right? Meaning they do not repeat. Okay, so that means that I'm not only referencing the track, right, but I am also unique. So my foreign key is also a primary key. Okay, so that establishes what is called a one-to-one -one relationship. There's one track and there's only one lyric for that, okay? Um, all right, so yeah, so between track and CD, there's a one-to-many, and between lyric and track, there's a one-to-one, -one, okay? Um, let's see, so um, 
uh, foreign key relationship. Yeah, so between these two, between the tracks and the, and the CDs, there's a one-to-many, and between the track and the lyric, there's a one-to-one, -one, okay? Uh, so here's, here's a, you know, if you had tables, this is what it would look like, right? On your CD one, two, three, right, you might have these three tracks, and on your CD two, three, four, you might have these two tracks. And then for those three tracks, right, for track number three to one, there is lyric three to one, right? And for track four, two, th four, three, two, there is one single lyric of four, three, two, right? So there's a one to one, all right? So, uh, so yeah, so how do we convert this? All right, so CD database class diagram, right? So, um, so first of all, you know, if we're converting tables uh, to to a class diagram, remember that we're not going to transform the primary key and the foreign key. We we had we said earlier that the that the association, right, the line, and the carnality already captures the fact that there's a one to many, that the primary key and the foreign key is only an implementation detail that is specific to the relational database that we're using, right? So usually, right, when you're converting between tables and class diagrams, you don't transform the fact that this is being implemented by primary keys and foreign keys, right? Going back to our pre previous example, right, we know that the way we're gonna implement this one-to-many is by adding this foreign key and this primary key Right? But in the original class diagram, notice that we did not have those foreign keys and primary keys. Right? Again, going back to what we discussed earlier, depends who the audience here is, right? If you want to you know, additionally add uh, additional attributes and properties because you want to you know, be you know, more, uh, you know, your, your audience is a little dense and they need those additional attributes, then sure, add the additional attributes. But normally we would not add them, right? We would not add them. The, the line and the carnality is enough to capture uh, the, the, um, the fact that we're implementing this. So the fact that internally the relational database is gonna use primary keys and foreign keys, that's an implementation detail. We don't capture that in the UML diagram. So here's a general algorithm of converting a database table, set of tables into an equivalent class diagram. So we're going to go both both ways, right? We're going to later on we're going to take a class diagram and convert it into a relational database. But here, let's see. Uh, so for each for each table that we see, we're going to convert it into a class. So every table that we see, we're we're going to have a class, right? So that's easy, right? That's that's very easy. We did that before, right? If you have table, student, enroll, section, course, and department, those roughly. Um, are converted into their classes, enrolled students, section, course, and department. Yes, so that's easy. Uh, so let's keep going. Now, if a table has a foreign key, right, uh, then that means that a, um, so for instance, if T1 has a foreign key to T2, that means that there's a one-to-many relationship there somewhere, right? Uh, that uh, that uh, you know, if, if T2 has a foreign key that points to T2, uh, then that means T2 is on the one side and T1 might be on the many side, right? Remember that? Right, if we go back to this example here, right? Uh, if you have this foreign key, if you have this foreign key to this primary key here, right? So T1 is referencing T2, then on T2, you are on the one side, see that? Now, where you have the foreign key, you could be either on the many side or you might be on the one side, like a one-to-one, -one, right? And that depends if your foreign key is also your primary key, which here we don't have, right? If your foreign key is also a primary key, then you are on the you're you're establishing a one to one relationship, okay? Which is exactly what we looked at here uh, when we looked at um, uh, where was it uh, lyrics, right? The lyrics, right? The foreign key here is also a primary key, so it's establishing a one to one. 
So our algorithm roughly captures that, right? So if you have a foreign key from T1 to T2, that means T2 gets a one. But T1 depends, right? If the foreign key is also a, a primary key, then you are a one side. But if you don't, if your foreign key is not also a primary key, then you are on the many side, right? And finally, all the attributes uh, in the table are just you know, transfer over as properties in the um, in the class. So, for instance, right? For instance, if you have the following tables where you have here student having a far a, a, a primary key and a foreign key pointing to a department, right? And the course also having a foreign key pointing to the department, and you have a section pointing to the course. Right. Notice, notice how hard it is to visualize this, right? That uh, you know this foreign key points to the department. So basically, you have a one-to-many relationship between the department and the student. You know, it's so much easier if you had a diagram re representation of this, which is exactly what we have here. See that? It's much easier to see that. Oh, there's a one-to-many re relationship between the department and the student. How is that implemented? By the student having a foreign key that references the primary key of the department. That's how it's implemented. That's how we implement this right here. Okay, same thing with the course and department. How is that implemented, the one-to-many? Well, the course has a foreign key to the department. See that? That's there. So there's a one-to-many between the department and the course. But it's so much easier to visualize right here. See that, All right? And the fact that we're using these foreign keys and primary keys, blah, 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 again, those are implementation details of the fact that we're using a relational database, okay? The not, you know, these values here are not really part of the data itself, right? Um, you know, the data is really titles and department names and graduation year and all that. Everything else here in bold is only establishing the relationships between the records, okay? Um, all right, so yeah, so if you if you apply our algorithm right here to this class, this 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 uh, this set of tables, what you end up is with this with this class diagram, okay? Or vice versa, we could go the other way around. Oh, but before we do that, wait a minute. Um, yeah, so it's much easier to look at the the class diagram than the the tables themselves. All right, so let's go the other way around. Let's start starting with the class right, classes, and we want to convert them into tables, right? So the algorithm is kind of backwards, right? It's the, it's the opposite, okay? For each class, basically we would have converted into a table. Before we did every table converts into a class, now we're going from each class becomes a table, right? And then all the fields in the class become properties or attributes, right, from the class. So the class has attributes or properties, right? They become fields, in the table and so vice versa, right? So the fields and table convert into attributes of the class, right? Uh, now the primary key, you start off with the primary key, you know that that's gonna be on the one, one side, right? And uh, so, so whenever you find a weak, strong relationship, right? Where you have a one-to-many, right? Uh, then that becomes a, an association where you have a one on the strong side and you have a star and asterisk on the weak side. Okay, so for instance, if you start off with this, uh, with this class, right? We start off with this class, you would create a table for each one of these, right? The student table, the section table, the department table, the course table, the enrollment table, right? And you end up with these tables right here, okay? Um, and with the attributes, right? So if these properties, D name, title, professor, year, offer, blah, 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 become the fields, right, of the tables. And then for each one of these one-to-many, one-to-many, right, you have a primary key on the one side and you have a foreign key on the many side, which is basically what we did here, right? The enrollment have these foreign keys, right, that are referencing the uh, primary keys in these over here. Here you have a foreign key referencing the, the primary key on this department, okay? All right, so then we can apply some simplifications. Uh, so for instance, for instance, uh, some fields 
are might be redundant. For instance, you might find a field that already plays the role of some other field. For instance, the, 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 for instance this here, this primary key, it's only, um, it's only reason of existing is to uniquely identify the department. But if we as assume that the department names in a university are unique already, right, it might, might make no sense to have two departments that have the same name, right? The chemistry department and the chemistry department over there. And it makes no sense to have two chemistry departments. Then since this is already unique, then why bother having a primary key in the first place? So we say that, the, that this field is a natural primary key as opposed to this being an unnatural or um, an arbitrary right, uh, a primary key. Okay, so for instance, uh, so for instance, we might simplify our, uh, our tables, right, by, you know, removing any, any unnecessary uh, fields, right, and using another field for it, right? So we can remove DID and replace it with D name, and now that's our primary key. If we do that, then we got to go and look at all the foreign keys because remember, we have the course. Uh, the course also was referencing the department and the student is also referencing the department, right? All right, so we need to replace those, right? So the major ID that was in the student table, we're going to replace it with the name of the department, right? The, the actual name of the department. Same thing with course, right? Uh, which I don't believe we did. We'll look at that in a minute. Uh, same thing with um, with students, right? So students, uh, let's see. Or I'm sorry, with permits, right? Instead of instead of having a unique identifier for the permit ID, right? Um, it, you know, since since a permit is a one to one relationship here, right? Because permit is a one to one relationship with the student, you know, why bother having a primary key in the permit? We could just have a, a um, we could just use the student ID as our primary key so that we can say, hey, this permit belongs to that student instead of having a unique identifier. So we could, what we could do instead of, we could remove the permit ID. The student ID is already unique, right? And since there's only one permit for one student, right? We can use the student ID, right? As our primary key that is referencing the student. And it's also, it's unique here in the permit. Okay. Um, what else? Same thing with um, uh, with the enrollment. Uh, you know, we could go. To, we could do away with the enrollment ID and the unique identifier for the enrollment by noticing that the combination of a student and a section that combination needs to be unique. Right? It would make no sense for a student to be enrolled in the section more than once. Like, make no sense that you're enrolled in thirty two hundred twice. Right, you know, one student is enrolled in one section only once. So the combination of student ID and the section ID is unique, is unique. So, so we could use the combination, notice the curly brackets here, see that? We can say that our unique identifier is the combination of these two things, right? So, so that could be our primary key, right? That unique, the, com the unique combination between the two. So we don't really need a, uh, a unique enrollment ID, okay? And I believe um, just, just a couple more things. Uh, the course, right? Remember that we had removed the department name, so we get the department ID, so we use the department name as unique. And same thing with the course. Course are unique. The title for the courses are unique, so we can use that instead of the primary key, right? And we can, uh, we can same thing for, for the section, right? All right, let's uh, let's leave it here. Uh, we'll come back and finish this off uh, later this uh, this week. Uh, please read ahead, uh, read the uh, the slides, all the slides and section in uh, for this week, uh, so that we can move along and finish up uh, by you know by by this week. All right, all right, folks. Thank you. Appreciate it.